Hey friends, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. It's actually a pretty busy day on the farm. Uh, Nathan and Sean are out back working on our seed starting tunnel, which I'm real excited about. That should be wrapping up in the next few weeks just in time for me to be using it to start seed. So super excited about that. Um, I'm actually gonna be down in the tunnel today, which is what I'm gonna take you guys along with me for. Um, all of our overwintered flowers. So we had carnations in there, Ami, Dara, Orlea, uh, Snapdragons, everything in there took a major beating, uh, honestly. And so I'm gonna be pruning some of those things up today and just kind of talking through some of that. Uh, Sean and I are currently recording our um, Winter Blooms course. And so if you enroll in that course when it's available, we go into much more you know, depth about all these overwintered flowers. Uh, but I did wanna kind of take you guys along today for what I was doing um, out in the tunnel. It's like kind of, you know, breaked in the rain. It's been raining here all weekend. Just really nasty if I'm being completely honest. And so, we kind of have a break in the rain, uh, perfect time to get outside, uh, let the kids burn some energy off and get some stuff done. I did want to detour out into the raised bed garden for a minute though. Uh, we had some help this past week. Um, I have a guy that I hire to help me whenever I have projects I need to get done uh, rather quickly and that's kind of what happened. I wanted to get uh, the raised bed garden cleaned out, the cottage garden cleaned out before we had just super, super uh, cold, nasty days. And I really wanted to show you guys what that looked like because he did a fantastic job. Um, and it just like, when you kind of have a clean slate, you get real excited for what the spring and the summer garden look like. So we will detour and show you guys uh, that real quick too. All right. Let's go take a look. So we got all of our trellises down and these three beds, all of them cleaned out. I do have a little bit of cabbage over there, but we harvested everything. And these three beds, they're 48 foot long beds. These are actually gonna be our dahlia beds. So I'm sure it wouldn't surprise you guys if I told you there was a project we were working on. And so we are actually growing out dahlias this year, kind of for an experiment and testing that out uh, for some really cool stuff uh, in the future, in the next few coming years. And so we have dedicated these three beds to dahlia production. Uh, we have spent a lot of time picking out the dahlias, things we think would work well together, collections we'd want to build out. And so that's something I'm real excited about. Um, dahlias are absolutely stunning to me. Um, just super versatile as far as like, you know, building bouquets, but then all the tubers and all that stuff. And so that's something we've kind of dedicated a space towards. Um, just having the freedom to experiment and learn uh, with all is this year and so i'm real excited about that but this will be like one of the first years and i know you know jessica too there's always been green beans up here so she's had green beans here for years and years uh, we immediately planted green beans in here and so it's going to be a little odd not seeing beans when you walk right through the garden but instead when you walk through you're going to see these beautiful three beds full of gorgeous dahlias and I'm real excited. So to have this kind of clean slate, uh, we will go in and amend these beds. And so it just feels really good to kind of have that step done and kind of looking forward to what we know is going to eventually uh, be in these beds. But then the cottage garden was something that we just needed to cut down all the blackberries. We needed to cut back all the roses. Um, we really just needed to do a clean slate um, and figure out where we are and what we're gonna do, which is exactly what has happened, you guys can see. This week we're gonna be uh, doing a video on like getting your greenhouses ready for seed starting. I know everybody is just looking forward to seed starting season, much like myself. And so there are a few things to think about. Um, and so that's something that we're gonna go over uh, this week too, so stay tuned for that. But let's head down uh, into the tunnel. Hey, Char. He's a rotten egg. He's a rotten egg. Uh -huh. Rowan is? Uh -huh. Are you the rotten egg? Yes. Oh, man. Second time. <laughs> I have been harvesting a ton of food out of here. We actually had some friends come over the other day and they requested some food, so we gave them um, a bunch of stuff. But like all the cauliflower I've harvested, all I have left food wise is this bed of cabbage. We've got some red cabbage here, and then in the back, the Brussels sprouts. They're not quite ready. These are massive though. As you guys can see, they're not splitting or anything, so we're just gonna let them keep going because we don't really have time to mess with them right now with all the other projects we have. Check that guy out. 
insane. So these will go to the pigs. Just need to harvest some of that. Um, this is all where I harvested cauliflower the other day. All these scraps will go to the pigs this week. All right, so what I have behind me are snapdragons. We've got the better portion of this entire bed is snapdragons. We have, I think, three or four different varieties. You hear that noise? It's the boys working on the tunnel. <laughs> um, and so I think what... I'm not really worried. One, I'm not worried because I don't like these were supposed to go dormant. Um, and so I'm not really worried or freaked out yet. I think we knew this was going to happen. Um, but if you can kind of see behind me and I'll try to shift it some, see where these plants have just literally went limp. So that's what's happened on most of these. They've just kind of fell over like this. They don't look well. They obviously have um, like discoloration where the frost has gotten it, which is pretty typical. You'll notice that. Um, the thing is, and what I think was the problem here was that we were having 80 degree days. And so even with the tunnel open, it was still getting like 80 degrees in here. Um, and these flowers are actually starting to put on buds and flower. So it was 80 degrees one day and literally within the next two days, it was like 12 degrees. And so these plants withstood a lot of shock um, and they weren't able to kind of gradually transition from warm uh, into cold like you usually would. Um, and so those are things that we have no control over. We cannot predict the weather. These are things I could have never uh, calculated. I could have never figured out or known uh, because it's weather and it's unpredictable and so I feel confident that these are going to be fine What I'm going to do though is where they have kind of just fallen over I like this I'm just going to go in with my pruners and kind of snip off all the damage and we'll just compost this And my hope is now that it is officially winter winter um, My hope is that they'll just kind of continue to be dormant and then when the spring comes They'll just put on all that new growth and we'll be fine. Um, this is one thing though, you know flowers are something that I have been expanding my knowledge in and really just learning and growing over the last few years especially like the last year or so and same if you're new like if you're growing flowers or vegetables it is you're going to be have you're going to be thrown learning curves constantly and you have to be willing to adapt and not get discouraged so when I came out here my initial reaction was oh my gosh I just like I killed all these plants what did I do what could I have done differently and the truth is there's nothing I could have done differently I've talked to several flower farmers in my area they all have done the same thing they had row cover in their tunnels their crops still look just like mine right there are some things that we just can't predict. And so you have to be willing to be flexible, go with the flow, think fast on your feet and know some things you just can't change. You you can't, you can calculate and do all these things, but then with farming or gardening, anyone knows this, you can have a pest come in, you can have a rodent, you can have a hailstorm, a thunderstorm, like whatever. So many different things can just have so many different effects that you could have never, uh, you know, prepared yourself for. So don't get discouraged and use it as a learning opportunity opportunity uh, to grow and so that's what I'm kind of doing here is I feel confident that they'll bounce back if they don't it was a really good learning opportunity but it was still something I could not have predicted um, even if I wanted to and so I'm trying not to beat myself up too much about it I'm just going to go through and try to do the necessary steps I need to do now uh, to ensure that these get the proper care that they need to and right now that's going to be pruning them back so let's get busy So I really wanted to show you guys this process and just show you what my flowers look like in the tunnel for several reasons. One, as kind of just encouragement that even though like we are doing this on a larger scale, you know, even though this is technically like what I'm doing for my job, there are still things that come up that I can't control. There are still things that may look like failure that actually aren't. Look at him being a goober. Um, and I say that to encourage you because none of us, no matter how long we've been doing this, have it all figured out. And I think that is the beautiful thing about farming and gardening and homesteading is that you've never officially arrived, right? Like you've never officially made it where you know everything and you know all the secrets um, and the tricks of the trade. And so for me, I love that because I am constantly growing as a 
gardener, a homesteader, and a farmer. And like moments like this where I'm having to think fast and troubleshoot, I love because it causes growth uh, in my life and in my knowledge and it essentially allows growth on my farm. And so I welcome opportunities like this. Uh, some may see them as setbacks, some may see them as failures, uh, but for me, I really just value moments like this where I can grow as a gardener um, and just do better and learn better. Um, and so I just wanna encourage you guys, whatever you might be you know, facing defeat in, um, hang on to some hope and encouragement that you are learning and think back to where you were a year ago. And for some of you, you may not even have been starting a year ago. And so even if you're failing, at least you started something to be able to fail at it. And now you get to try again to do better and do better. And that's something that I always try to tell myself. I know that my you know, earlier years in doing this, I easily got discouraged. And it's because I lived in a season of comparison where I compared what I was doing uh, to what someone else was doing. And that's just, it's not fair to do that to yourself. <laughs> so I would encourage you guys not to do that to yourself. Um, but also too, it's just use it as an opportunity to learn. Use it as an opportunity to help someone else too. I know that like my friend Lauren, she's dealing with similar situations like what I am dealing with right now with flowers. And so we've been leaning on each other a lot, trying to navigate and troubleshoot, uh, you know, this together. And so it's a really good opportunity just to connect with your community as well, because more than likely you're not the only one dealing with the problem, um, especially if it's like a weather related problem. Other farmers and gardeners in your area are gonna be dealing with the same thing. And so try to make lemon out of lemonade is what I'm saying here, folks. Um, I, and it took me a couple days, I'll be honest, when I came out here and saw all this stuff in the tunnel, like my heart kind of sank and I thought, oh no, like I've totally screwed all this up. And then I had to like take a minute and come to my senses and be like, Jill, you are learning. Like, it's okay, give yourself the liberty and the opportunity to learn and grow. And that's exactly what's happened. And I am hopeful that I'm gonna show you guys these flowers in the spring and they're gonna be blooming and abundant and beautiful. And it's gonna be something that I laugh about later on. Um, and so don't be discouraged, you guys. Stay hopeful and encouraged by the process uh, because you are learning as you're growing and that is definitely worth it. When I came in here earlier and they're all kind of toppled over, it's, it's really kind of weird. They did just like completely fall over like that. But by the time, you know, just these few plants I've done shooting this video with you guys, what's left is all the really good uh, greenery and so I do feel hopeful that they are gonna they've established good root systems We've had these flowers in the ground for months and months So the roots are good and established so I do feel hopeful um, that they are gonna spring back up and that everything's gonna be fine uh, But I do know like a lot of people right now are dealing with Their vegetables not having been under row cover um, and getting a lot of frost damage I would just encourage you harvest everything that you can like I said most of the stuff out in the raised bed garden we went ahead and harvested just for the sake of not losing it. Um, and those are things that you definitely do kind of have to think about on the front end of it. Also, no judgment. I'm totally out here in my jammies doing my gardening chores. <laughs> Sometimes you just do what you gotta do. <laughs> You're blaming your hair on the humidity. Yeah. <laughs> you guys missed that. I quit recording for a slight second. Huh? Okay, so I was telling them that this might look like a failure to most people. But I'm convinced it's not. And also to stay hopeful and use a setback as an opportunity to grow. So I'm gonna put you on the spot here, but what is your, like, if you could give gardening advice or just, yeah. Maybe, yeah. If you they could watch give, you for gardening I advice. I know, but this is a little <laughs> impromptu thing. If you could give gardening advice to someone in the beginning stages where it's easy to get discouraged. Nathan knows there were many a nights where I would cry and think I'm not cut out for this. And like, did I really, is this really what I want to do <laughs> with my life? This is so hard. It's so unpredictable. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times you just need encouragement, which is why I do a lot of encouragement on my channel because I don't want you guys to give up or be discouraged by the process and know that this lifestyle is worth it. And I 100% believe that. Uh, but someone who offered me a lot of encouragement, what is some encouragement you could give them? Oh, goodness. Uh, off the top of my head, I mean, grace. Oh. Because if you word. do not give yourself grace, um, you will feel like you always fail. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not checking the weather every day this time of year, if you're not, 
you know, diligently checking on them. And who has time to do that? Right, right? <laughs> especially you know? if you're doing another job, like you have another job. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So give yourself grace, yeah. you know. Um, it's part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. You know, we've learned so many things the hard way. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and we're getting better at things. But, you know, who, especially in Arkansas, and, you know, no matter where you guys are, I'm sure you guys have crazy weather too. 80 degrees Christmas Day, and then a week later, we've got below freezing temperatures. Yeah. So, um, you know, our plants are just as confused as we are. Yeah, so. they really are. And I think overall, they've, they've done well considering the drastic change. Yeah. 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 We've lost a little bit, mm -hmm. but we've also preserved a lot too. Yeah. So. yeah, definitely I would agree with you on give yourself grace in the process and also just have fun. Like if you're not enjoying doing it, then you kind of have to reevaluate and ask yourself why you're doing it. And there have been seasons of my life where I realized I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I had to reprioritize and pause and readjust and figure out how I get to a place where I'm enjoying it again I'm having fun and like remembering that this is everything I dreamed for and so if you're in a place where you're feeling super frustrated and you're not having fun maybe just take a step back maybe take a season off maybe do try something else for a little while um, and if it's really your passion you'll come back to it every time you know that's right you know um, why why are you doing this in the first yeah place, so. so maybe just some simple questions to ask yourself yep. Because I just, I, and this is relevant to me, uh, one, you see my plants right now, but then two, I've been talking with a lot of family members and friends just really facing discouragement on like, I'm failing, why am I doing this, nothing's working, you know, as I thought it would, or I put all this work in this thing and then it still didn't, you know, do what I thought it was going to do and I've just, you know, been dealing with this a lot with close friends and family and just realized that sometimes we just got to give ourselves grace come back to the reason of why we started, celebrate the small victories, and just every day keep waking up and doing it. Really, it's showing up is a big part of it and knowing that not everything's gonna turn out and that's okay. That's right. Yeah. Good advice, babe. <laughs> Thanks, and here I was asking you for advice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, the temperatures are steadily dropping, so we are calling it quits out here. Um, Sean got the wooden, uh, bottoms put on the tunnel and then kind of this like channel along the sides and he got pipe hung up right down the middle uh, so we're definitely making progress so it's just getting really windy <laughs> rain's supposed to start setting back in it's just super super nasty but i feel good about where we are and we're still going to make our timeline for starting seed so i am hopeful um and i'm feeling good about it just walking the farm and seeing all the tunnels and seeing gardens get cleaned out just has me so excited uh for the spring but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today as i was in the tunnel and just kind of talked through uh, some of the challenges that we're dealing with <laughs> right now uh, but thanks for hanging out i'll talk to you soon